That's fun. Did you start the projector in LDS? No. How do you do that? Oh, shit. Uh... Yo, what is up, everyone? I am here with Jimbo Moses, and we're about to watch a Breath of the Wild speedrun. So uh, grab a snack, grab a drink, and settle in. Take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jimbo underscore Moses. Uh, this is Breath of the Wild. We're going to be doing Master Sword Restricted here. Um, and what I mean by Master Sword Restricted is we're going to avoid the glitches that allow you to get the Master Sword early um, bypassing the 13 heart requirement for pulling it. Um, so we're going to do basically a little mini shrine rush here. Uh, 40 shrines in about an hour and a half, hour 40, and we're hoping it'll go pretty well. Um, with me I got Talus Thomas, who is another Breath of the Wild speedrunner. I'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Talos Thomas. Um, I mainly run any percent, uh, and I'm really excited to watch Jimbo run this category. He has done some great things for it recently, so super excited. Calties, I hope you don't mind if we take it off and do a bit of a reset. Yep. What do you guys need me to do? All right, I think we're good to go now. So um, let's try this again. Uh, what's up? This is Dale. I'm back. I'm here with Jimbo underscore Moses, and we are about to watch some Breath of the Wild, so take it away. All right. Um, like we said, we're doing the Master Sword Restricted category, basically a mini shrine rush where you complete 40 shrines to get 13 hearts, and then we're going to pull that magic sword at the very end. And with me is Talus Thomas, if you'd like to introduce himself. Hey, everybody. I'm Talus Thomas. Um, I primarily run any percent, and I'm just learning Master Sword Restricted right now. Um, and super excited to watch Jimbo. He's very, very good at this category. So, yeah, so um, you'll notice initially that we're in a weird language. Kind of the funky thing about Breath of the Wild is that different languages are faster for different categories. My route specifically for this category is fastest in Russian because uh, we do a couple shrines where only one text box appears and instead of two in other languages. So that's one reason. Um, and you also notice that we're in Italian, but I'll let that be a surprise of why we're in Italian in just a second. So first thing we gotta do is get the Sheikah Slate here. It's required. You need to get the four shrines and four runes off Plateau in order to get out of here. Uh, but it lets us do a useful trick um, called scope clipping. We're gonna go ahead and mash through this text. Then we're going to try and set up the glitch. And if uh, Thomas could go ahead and explain it while I get focused on setting it up correctly. Yep, so this is the Shrine of Resurrection Club. It's probably the most finicky trick we have in the game. Um, it's probably the most reset heavy point for most runners, and it's the first 30 seconds. So essentially what we're going to do, what Jimbo's going to do, is make Link climb up a wall. We're going to get Link facing a very certain direction and get our camera facing it as well. And then he is going to mash the scope button like no tomorrow. And hopefully what'll happen is we'll get it on the right frame and then we'll just kind of plop through the wall. There we go. See, just the slightest touch and then it made the difference. It's kind of a weird trick, like it's, it, sometimes it feels extremely specific, others not specific at all, so sometimes you just gotta hope and you get lucky. Now you're also gonna notice that we're out of bounds, but the problem with Breath of the Wild is that you have collision on both sides of every wall and every floor, so I had to do like a little crouch clip to get back inbounds. But because we left the Shrine of Resurrection and didn't watch the opening cutscene, we're going to have locked time of day at roughly 5.15 a.m. and no weather whatsoever. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to do is run over here to this Boko camp and steal some food. Food's pretty important for this category. 
We're also going to get a pot lid, which is uh, needed for some pretty important glitches. And you're also noticing that I'm kind of like sprinting endlessly. Um, if you're new to Breath of the Wild, you probably haven't seen uh, this trick called whistle sprinting. Basically, you just hold down the whistle button and then mash the sprint button, uh, the sprint button, and it convinces the game that you are whistling while you're also sprinting. So you can just go and go and go. Um, so now we're on our way to the stasis shrine. It's the most like movement heavy uh, trick in this category. Uh, it requires us to move pretty quickly through the snow field because we are going to take some damage intentionally. So I'm going to do some very careful shield jumps here. And then we're going to another Boko camp where I'm going to get some arrows and a bow, hopefully, without any trouble from these guys. And uh, Russian is fastest for this route of this category. Um, generally speaking, it's different in other categories. Like in 100%, uh, probably better to go with English. Because uh, one, you can read what you're doing, and two, it kind of saves time on a few different cutscenes. Uh, but any percent, the fastest language is French. And then in, in other uh, categories like all dungeons, I think it's Italian. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure the world record route for uh, MSR is English too. I'm no, not mistaken. Uh, they they use German because they don't they do German. the okay. same uh, cutscenes. So next we're gonna do a trick called skew clipping, and as I do it, I'll let Thomas explain what's going on exactly. Yep, so there was a mechanic found where if we shield jump Link onto a steeply slanted surface, like Jimbo did, and then um, while we do a shield jump, if we unequip, Link kind of snaps back and forth. And we actually found out that it's possible to uh, actually just clip through thin walls, if it's possible. Um, so Jimbo's going to try and get himself at a, a very specific angle and position, and uh, hopefully clip through. Um, stasis is probably the least consistent of the four shrines we have to do on the Great Plateau, um, because we really don't have an actual setup for it. The other three shrines, uh, we actually do have very specific setups we do that helps us clip right through immediately. That's right. Kind of a fussy one, which you saw a little bit of uh, trouble there. Uh, but we got through, and we're getting our first rune here with Stasis. And this shrine is fairly casual, we're just gonna freeze a couple objects and run past them. And then uh, do one kind of tricky jump to get to the monk. Okay, first we focus on this cog immediately. Hop over. And then let the rune refresh to get this boulder. And we're also going to pick up a hammer in this category. Um, typically in longer ones you'll pick up this guy because it's handy as a tool, not really a weapon, um, but it'll let us break through some breakable walls later on in the category, in the run. And I'll jump past this guy and bork. But, you know, I'll quickly eat so I don't die. So that uh, boulder skip is a little tricky. Uh, unfortunately, Jimbo died to snap back there, but yep. um, we can use shield jumps as double jumps effectively in this game. Uh, yeah. So you shield jump, and then unequip. You're supposed to unequip when you land on the other side, and you just uh, kind of run freely past it. So I'll go ahead and blame nerves for that one, but that's okay. We'll get back on track here shortly. All right. So, kind of a funky thing about this game, like you want to skip these cutscenes, but this one specifically, with this monk text uh, saying you completed the shrine, whatever. You wait until he's starting to disappear and the text goes away to press X, because that lets the overworld load faster. So now uh, we're going to be moving on to our next uh, couple set of tricks. But first got to deal with that scream, <laughs> and that's why we're in Italian. I swear <laughs> to god, it gets me every time. Um, we're going to mash through four text selections, the second, the first, the first, and the second, just to make it as quick as possible. And then uh, I'm going to do a few tricks. One is called a boulder launch, which we're going to do in just a second. And then we're going to be doing our first bullet time bounce, which as I'm doing, I'll let Tom go ahead and explain it. Okay. So now I'm going to sprint over here, stasis this guy, and just kind of ride it up the top of this mountain here. 
set the angle with my arrow, pick it back up. It is useful. And then we're gonna go over to this Boko camp and set these dudes up for this pretty cool launch. Yep, so while Jibble's getting set up, uh, I'll talk to you about bullet time bounces. Bullet time bounces are our fastest mode of transportation in Hyrule. Um, pretty much, we do a shield jump, enter in bullet time, and if we hit an enemy that ragdolls, we get launched at about 19 times our speed. Um, so, that's how we get from shrine to shrine. It's super quick. Um, but then you probably think of something as like, hey, we're flying through the air, but we don't have the power glider yet. How are we going to get out of the air? Well, Jimbo's going to do something called a full damage cancel, where he will start a throw animation and then unequip or re-equip any piece of equipment, and that effectively resets Link's fall height, so you don't actually take any damage. I just got to make sure that I don't uh, slip back, back down that hill. But I can also use that whistle sprinting mechanic to um, get up slopes and refresh my stamina to make climbing a bit easier. Man, Snapback is being rude today, I tell you what. So sometimes, uh... Wow, that's twice in a row. That's so fun. Yeah. So we should note that if uh, Jimbo does hit anything with the shield equipped, um, it does lose his skew, so he needs to go and reset oh, it. I died. I'd say this is about a worst case scenario here, unfortunately. Um, got a very bad BTB and couldn't clip in and also died. So, we're just gonna have to try that again, I suppose. And I guess this is a fine place to be. But this is gonna go just fine this time. Um, I just erased my skew, didn't I? Yeah. What is going on? Okay. Uh, I swear something's wrong. Okay. Let's try this again. We do a shield jump, unequip. And we're in there. Okay. Okay, good. A little bit of a headache, but you know, it happens. Alright, so now we're gonna be picking up the cryo rune here. And that's gonna give us well, a little bit of an advantage in the shrine. It's not really all that impressive of a rune. We barely use it. It's usually just for a way of getting up from one level to another. So if Thomas could uh, really quickly just go ahead and explain cryo uh, jumps for me really quickly while I concentrate on the shrine. And then we'll get this run back on Drac. So Jibo's going to set two cryonis uh, blocks initially, one to get up the platform, one to raise the gate. And he's going to do a third one, which is kind of angled slightly at a ledge. And what he'll do is he'll start a cryonis block, he'll do a shield jump, hopefully time it right so that he kind of slides across the top a little bit as it's rising, and then be able to jump up and get to the top layer of the uh, shrine. This usually saves about seven seconds if you do it quickly enough. Um, it's not the end of the world if you miss it, but it's just a really cool looking trick. Would now be a good time for a donation? It'd be a great time. Sounds good. We have a $5 donation from Speed Ducks saying, Can we hit a thousand tonight? Let's start a $5 train. Choo choo. I am with it. Let's make it happen. Get that train going. All right. So now we're moving on to another BTB. We're gonna, we are hopefully going to fly all the way to the Magnesis Shrine. Um, this is. I'd say the hardest BTB in this category, except for maybe a couple others. Um, it requires pretty specific timing. Uh, but what I'm going to do is stand on this ledge in a specific way and shoot an arrow right here at this spot. And wait for these guys to come over. 
And the other third dude came over, which is rather unfortunate. That hardly ever happens, and that is going to be a reload for me. That's a bit unfortunate, and that's uh, just RNG coming into play right there. There's not really a lot you can do to affect that third guy from coming over, because like I said, it doesn't happen. It happens maybe one out of every 30 or 40 times, maybe less than that. So... Yeah, it's extremely rare to happen. Every once in a while, if it does happen, you can still squeak out getting the right angle, but most of the time it's, it's, a, it's a reload. So ideally, Jimbo wants to hit the butt end. Like the very back, bottom of the, the goblin's back to get a good angle. So that's a bit low, but that's alright. I landed a bit uh, early, but we're alive and we're here, which is all that really matters. So now we're gonna do a little bit of a stock up here. Um, these crates have arrows and a bit of food in them, but it's entirely RNG as to what comes out. And that drop was pretty bad, just one arrow. Uh, we're gonna do another skew clip here. We're gonna set skew on the shrine uh, by bonking on that little texture there. Got a couple arrows, so that's good. And then we're gonna clip through this little eye and then into the elevator. Into the elevator, there we go. So now this uh, upcoming shrine is really boring. Uh, there isn't really one glitch associated with it other than one of those big shield jumps. So we'll download this uh, rune. And then we can go ahead and move on through the plateau. So another glitch that we can use uh, in this game is called uh, Durability Protection. Um, if you know anything about Breath of the Wild, every weapon you have will break, every shield, every bow. Um, and since we are doing these shield clips by bonking our shield on intentionally onto sloped surfaces, it can cause the shield to wear down quicker. But if you unequip the shield and then re-equip it in midair during the jump and land, it typically doesn't cause any damage, which is nice because uh, I've been making quite a few mistakes and I'm uh, worried about the durability of the shield going forward. But I think for safety and for some arrows, uh, I'm going to be getting a shield a little bit later uh, on as we leave the plateau. Alright, so next we're going to be doing a trick called Box Walk. Uh, we're going to use that stasis rune and we're going to basically ride a box over to the next camp and hopefully get the BTB to the bomb shrine. So I need so, to make sure that I'm set up at a specific angle here. And then position myself in the right spot. Yeah, slipped off, but that's okay. What were you about to say, Thomas? Oh, I think that was me. So it looks oh. like we are getting a $5 train going on. We have $5 from Anonymous. It says $5 train. We have another $5 donation from Lake. It says doing my part in the $5 train. Good luck with the run, Jimbo. And we have one from Keto Fox that has a very large wall of emojis that I'm not going to try to read. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everyone. Okay. Well, that box walk's a bit sloppy, but we were able to get the BTV. So now we're going to do our last uh, clip into the shrine. And I forgot to mention, the reason why we're doing this is because the way you open up the shrines is to activate the Great Plateau Tower. But because we didn't activate it yet, uh, none of these shrines are open, so we got to do these clips to get in. Uh, but we will activate the tower once uh, Plateau is finished. Because otherwise we would have to clip in that way in every shrine and that would be awfully slow. And also we wouldn't be able to warp anywhere either. And it would just not be fun. No. 
I wouldn't want to do it. All right, so now we're going to be getting the bombed uh, rune, and that's going to give us the most uh, broken trick in this entire game called wind bombs. So while I go ahead and get this set up, uh, I'll let Tallis Thomas explain what a wind bomb is. So remember that nice bullet time mechanic I was talking about when we discussed BTBs real quick? Well, guess what? It's even more broken than we thought. Um, almost a year ago to the day, actually tomorrow is wind bomb's birthday, um, we found out that if you drop a bomb, enter bullet time, drop the second bomb, and then detonate the first one, it will launch Link really fast, pretty far. Um, the reason that this is a oh, amazing discovery is we used to do something called stasis launches, where we actually used to have to use a stasis rune and, and uh, some kind of object and weapon, <clears throat> charge up the stasis rune fully, and then make it actually do damage to Link. The issue with that is we had to route in weapons, we had to route in recovery food, we had to route in the items themselves that would hit us. Um, wind bombs essentially let you do that exact movement um, pretty much from anywhere you can enter bullet time. So it's been extremely, extremely helpful. Satogashi, father of wind bombs, exactly. All right, so we're done with the shrines. Um, what you saw there was a front hop wind bomb, and there's lots of different varieties of them. Uh, next we're going to be doing what's called a turn wind bomb. Uh, and the reason why we're doing it is to get a really low angle, because if we do a normal one, Link won't recover from the flopping around in the air and he'll just die. So I'm going to set up here and kind of delay going into bullet time. And that's not too bad. Usually you like to land a little bit higher and kind of skim through the grass, but that's not too bad. And then we're going to do a stasis trick called Rocket Tree, where I cut it down, and then freeze it, and then load it up with energy, and use an arrow to shoot it up toward the up toward the uh, Temple of Time. And I'm going to unequip that Boko bow that I had because I want a bow in a chest up here, so it'll just automatically equip itself. So that's the Great Plateau over with. Uh, the old man, big surprise, is the king of Hyrule. He's gonna tell us to go save Hyrule and save Zelda, and we're just gonna kinda ignore that suggestion, I guess. Mm. So now we got the paraglider, we can go ahead and get off uh, Plateau. But we need to activate the tower first so that we can have warp points and also enter shrines cleanly. <laughs> Now we're also going to do something, another variety of the uh, wind bomb here called a mid-air wind bomb. What I'm going to do is glide through the air and then set up the bombs from the side and then let them send Link through the air. And right there what I did was called a super launch. Uh, basically um, you can abuse the lag in this game to speed Link up somewhat. I'm looking for a Boko here but uh, there he is. He didn't really want to load in. And he didn't want to drop any arrows for me either, so that was a bit of a waste of time, unfortunately. He does drop arrows for you occasionally, and that would have helped me out in the route, but RNG said no. So that uh, super launch thing, uh, what I did was I buffered the menu to induce lag and then paused to uh, sort of sustain the lag and paused again once I saw it. And if you can pull your glider on the next frame, it causes things to fly at double the speed. And we're going to be using that a lot uh, because one, we only have one stamina wheel and that's what we're going to stick with. So if we want to go places quickly, we need to uh, abuse the physics as much as, as much as possible. I will say super launches are extremely hard to do, uh, especially when you're first learning them. Um, Jimbo has been kind enough to help me kind of understand them a little bit more as I'm learning them, but uh, they are not as easy as just menuing because you do actually need to hit um, 
pulled the glider out on the frame, that link is lagging, which right. is uh, kind of tricky to do. And you need to get the correct speed. Like, there's uh, such a thing as going too fast, mm -hmm. where uh, the game will just freak out and stop Link in midair. We call it a speed cap. Uh, and also, if you're not going fast enough, you won't get any lag, so you gotta kind of, like, get the correct speed going. Uh, so right there I did yet another variety of wind bomb, a backflip setup, um, and I set it up in a really specific way to get a somewhat weak launch, because like I said, with super launches you can lag out and uh, just stop in midair. So I did that with the intent of getting the correct speed. That's a good super though. Thank you. Uh, so upcoming is Bosch Kala. I obviously can't read the text, it's in Russian, and I can't read Russian either. Uh, this is one of the dullest shrines. Uh, you could do a wind bomb through here, probably. That would be pretty quick, but we're trying to conserve food, and you literally just run through and glide across with the wind currents. But this is as the, uh, the run really gets going here, as we, uh, start plowing through shrines. So something to note, too, um, which we didn't get to talk about on Ignesis. Um, so since Jimbo is kind of moving faster, than we really should be in this game. Um, there is a chance that we will actually be the game's load times. If you've ever played Breath of the Wild casually, you could run around endlessly and never really run into a load. But since we're doing things like wind bombs and BTBs, we can actually outpace, outpace the game's engine. So on occasion, um, it is possible to get to a shrine from one to the other so quickly that the shrine's textures haven't fully loaded in. So that nice front door that's there that keeps you out, um, usually we just run straight through. Yeah. Yeah. That's not very good. Uh, so right there I was attempting to do a turn wind bomb. Uh, we kind of figured out that if you do like a normal front hop setup... Oh, fell off the ledge there. Let's try to set that up just again. This is not a spot I've ever tried to do this from. Okay. Got back on track there. Um, basically, if you do a front hop setup and then release the bombs in the normal way, but then you turn at the last second, it causes them to um, collide with Link in a way that sends him a lot faster and a lot lower. And typically I would do a wind bomb in this shrine, but just so we get a little variety in the run, I'm gonna do a little stasis boost trick here. I'm gonna take Pulse this. Strats. Oh yeah, let's go. We're gonna take this block here and load it up with a couple hits, and then set the angle this way, and then let it carry me on through. Not as fast, but it's a little bit more satisfying to watch. Yeah, wind bombs really did change both the Master Sword Restricted category and the Ultrons category as uh, it kind of nullified a lot of the uh, strats that we were using previously because now we can just wind bomb through them instead of having to try to figure out the quickest way to do the puzzles. Right. You know, if you ever watch 100% of this game, uh, I would guess the number of wind bombs that they do is around 2,000. Like, they are that good. Alright, so now we're going to do another turn wind bomb over here to Hilareo. This is my favorite one. And I was able to get that super launch. A little bit off to the left, but that's okay. Uh, you might know this shrine as the Flower Blight Shrine. If you step on any of those flowers, a lady will murder you. Uh, but we just glide on over and avoid old Flower Blight. Um, so, earlier on Plateau you saw me do a few BTBs on Red Bokoblins without you know, any kind of trouble. Uh, the problem with that trick is that not every enemy will fall over and ragdoll as you're trying to bounce off their heads. It's kind of rude. Um, so in order to get around that uh, issue, what we do is we freeze enemies, but you'll notice that I don't have any ice arrows. This is the shrine where we're going to get those. Um, I was trying to do a turn wind bomb setup there to get through, but it decided it didn't want to work right now, so that's fine. We'll just go ahead and do it the casual way. Um, and I'm gonna try to blow up this wall before that 
exploding barrel gets over there because it will give me some splash damage and kill me at one heart, but we can get there just in time. So now that we have an, our ice arrows, we can do BTBs again. Alright. So next we're going to Kaiwan, and around Kaiwan is a really handy forest. It's used in every category that gets off plateau and doesn't go kill Ganon immediately. Uh, there's lots of hardy radishes and endurish rooms, pretty friendly stuff for speedrunners. Um, but I'm not really going to use those in the uh, way that you'd expect because health management is a, an issue in this category. But we kind of found a way around that. So going for another backflip super. Didn't get any lag, but that's alright. We'll just go ahead and back up another one here. So one thing you'll notice when Jimbo is attempting to do supers is he uh, tries to aim it towards trees, generally. Um, the higher polygon count we get on screen, the easier it is to induce lag. Um, to see him later on, uh, when he has areas that don't have a lot of polygon cap, we'll actually turn on the VR mode. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll get more into that when we get to those supers. Right. So we're just gonna kinda sprint through the forest here, stock up on some vittles. Link likes, it, likes his vittles. Uh, a couple apples for good measure, why not? And we can, uh, we can also Whistle Sprint and pick up items at the same time, so that's kind of handy. Alright, and that should be all of our food for the whole route, hopefully. And in Kaiwan, we do another kind of cryo boost. Uh, hopefully I'll get this one, because I didn't get the one in the Cryona Shrine, but it'll help me get up this uh, waterfall pretty quickly. All right, so we'll set one there. Nice. That makes that pretty quick. And if, since we have the soldier's bow, just one shots that guardian immediately. Oop. Got a little bit too quick there. I ran out of stamina. I'm gonna let myself recover so I don't drown. That would be bad. And I'm gonna put a cryo block just on the edge of that platform there, so that this platform blocks the guardian shot, and then I can just glide on past this next one. All right. Uh, so in the past, you would probably cook a bunch of food after the shrine, but I'm just gonna cook two chilies to make a cold resist food and then one Endura Shroom just for safety, and that should be just fine for the whole run. And this saves quite a bit of time because cooking takes about seven times, sorry, seven seconds on average, so instead of cooking anywhere from like seven to nine meals, you uh, get around that a little bit here. And I'll explain in a little bit why we're gonna cook so little. Quickly mash through the cutscene, and then we're gonna try to carefully line up in a specific way. Uh, okay, so we're gonna hurt ourselves instead. Bold strategy. Um, look back at this forest for lag, and it looks like we got that one, so that's pretty good. Um, and then this next shrine upcoming, um, we're going to intentionally bomb ourselves. And this game has a mechanic called one-shot protection. Uh, typically, if you get hit at full health, things won't kill you, and there are some ex some exceptions to that rule. But if you bomb yourself at full health in three hearts, you won't die. Um, and I killed that guy because he's going to make life hard for me in this uh, upcoming BTB. Uh, so we just get him out of the way now. Alright, so for this trick, 
I'm going to place a square bomb here, and I'm going to do a neutral shield jump to put myself in a weird ragdoll state, and then blow myself through the hole. And then eat again, just to make sure that I don't die. And then pop over the wall into the room with the monk. Saves a few seconds. Looks pretty stylish. Big fan of this strat. And that was found uh, semi-recently by Glitch Hunter. Uh, Japanese gl Glitch Hunter, I think. And uh, I started putting it to runs. Alright, so now we're gonna do a pretty annoying BTB, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Uh, we're gonna use a Lizelfos to do this, and these guys have a really weird uh, polygon shape underneath them, and that wherever you hit them kind of dictates where you go, so I'm gonna be pretty careful to line him up and freeze him at a very specific time. So I freeze him when he's basically standing neutral, and then stand behind him on a cryo block so we can get some bullet time. Hopefully hit the middle of his back. And this BTB has a tendency to launch you either straight up or in the completely wrong direction if you don't hit the bullet time exactly right. Alright, so we... that wasn't a great angle, we went right at that mountain, but that's okay. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into Kakriko Village, because there's a statue in here that can we can redeem hearts for, and if I just get two extra hearts here, that will basically eliminate the need for eating any food. We have food for safety, but this kind of eliminates the need to do all that cooking I was talking about earlier. You know, previously we used to cook all the radishes that uh, cut from that forest because it gave you an additional three hearts. So we'd have six hearts going into it. And then one day Jimbo was like, hey, why don't we just get hearts? Because we already have eight container, eight uh, spirit orbs. And he changed it up and it has been lovely so far. Well, I think that uh, in the past it was seen as kind of like, for beginners, you would get these two hearts here just for safety. Uh, and it is a good thing to do for beginners for sure. Um, but we never really like timed it or like mapped out the uh, damage that you get throughout the run. So I just kind of like did some timings and did some calculations. And it breaks relatively even. But the time save uh, really comes from not having to menu through this entire, like, complicated menu and find the food and figure out what you need to do. Or, like, be worried about uh, taking fall damage and dying. It kind of just eliminates all of that, so that's the real time save. Um, this shrine is Taloneg. It's a tutorial shrine where a guardian's gonna come out of the wall and- or out of the floor and teach you how to strafe and do jump attacks and whatnot. We're going to ignore that. Uh, we're gonna wind bomb over the uh, trigger. Like, there's a cutscene trigger, but it only goes up so high. So if I do it correctly, I can just pop right over it. And I was able to do it. So now that we have skew state, we can uh, clip into this pillar here. And then get back out and we're done. Don't forget to clear a ragdoll. So yeah, a uh, thing that we haven't talked about yet is uh, these shield clips uh, are called... Uh, sorry, these shield clips induce a state called ragdoll, where if you try to launch, Link won't go anywhere. So we land on the shield to clear the skew, and then we just flop on over to make sure that it doesn't uh, fail us later on. You failed to mention you did the hardest trick in the game, which was getting on top of that chest. <laughs> yeah, frame perfect, by the way. Not really. But I do hate, hate getting on that chest. Alright, so now we're gonna go up to the top of the Dueling Peaks. I'm gonna do a quick turn wind bomb to get up on this mountain. And then do another one. And hopefully get a super... There we go. And we're going to this enemy camp here, where hopefully the game will give me arrows. I'm a bit concerned because I don't have many, but I think that I can survive if the game decides to be stingy. Oh, 
So we alert these dudes. The game did give me arrows. I'm gonna let them kind of come at me. I want that red guy to come over. Because my, uh, routing for ice arrows doesn't really allow to use them here, so... Uh, he doesn't let himself on fire. And he... I killed him. Um, oh, no. that's okay. We'll just go ahead and use an ice arrow and then get back up ice arrows elsewhere. That good dude killed himself too. Some, uh... Interesting... Oh god, you see this. <laughs> and we had some crazy inward skew there, which kind of freaked me out, but luckily we're uh, getting up here. So we'll have to remember to go get some extra ice arrows. This is not ideal, but hey, it's a marathon. This, these kind of things happen. Goblins tend to do whatever they want. They're not usually the, they usually don't play too well with us. Yeah, they don't care for speedrunners. But that's okay. We don't like them either. We don't want to be friends with them. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and eat here because I'm worried about the fall damage. And we did take quite a bit, but we're just fine. Yeah, knowing, knowing backups uh, is really important, I say, especially for this category. Um, a lot can go wrong, I'll be honest. Uh, it's sort of a, like, people market uh, MSR as being a, a good beginner category, and I would agree if you're, um, you know, being really careful with food and uh, all that sort of stuff, but, you know, because we're trying to be fast boys here and skipping some things, um, things can go a little bit wrong and can go sideways on you. So it's good to know those things when they come up. Yeah, the, the main reason that it's referred to as a more beginner-friendly uh, category as, as opposed to any percent is any percent has one, probably one of the hardest BTBs in the game mm -hmm. um, to get from Temple of Time to Hyrule Castle. You have a one to two frame window to enter bullet time. If you screw it up, um, you gotta redo it but also uh, a pretty crazy boss rush at the end, which is insanely hard to learn, so... Yeah. Since you don't have to fight any bosses in this category, it's kind of uh, a little bit more uh, beginner-friendly. And just as a teaser for later, I was told that we already met the incentive, so we are going to be doing the boss rush. Uh, I have a file set up and ready to go, and so I'll be able to show off some of those any percent strats. With a little safety in mind, you know, because I don't want to completely... Uh, botch this thing in front of an audience, but, you know. We got that coming up once we get the old Master Sword. So now we're gonna jump down here to read a he. Uh, this is one of the worst shrines. Um, I have a specific turn wind bomb strat for it that usually works out for me, but it's pretty specific. So, need a little first try energy here from you guys. Can confirm, this shrine is miserable. And the reason why it's so miserable is that the ceiling is just very low, and it's uh, a long, uh, you know, rectangular, rectangular shaped room. And looks like we got it. No problem. Nice. First try, guys. No big sweat. Link did look like he was thinking about kissing that uh, pillar there, but mm -hmm. he decided uh, against it. So we do have a few more donations, if now's a good time. Great time. All right, so we have a $5 donation from Quo. This says Polka. We have a $5 donation from Quo that says Polka. <laughs> and we have a $5 donation from Quo that says Polka broccoli emoji. Thank you, Quo. Quo and Quo. Who doesn't like Polka, honestly? If you don't like Polka, you can get out. <laughs> Not really. But really. Alright, so now we did a little quick turn wind bomb over here to Ha Dahamar. Um, this is kind of a funky shrine here. We're going to intentionally sort of bounce off the wall and try to get on these, like, rafters. 
Um, I don't love this strat. It tends to act weird for me, but I'm not super used to it. So I'm gonna be very careful to just make sure I'm doing it correctly. And we have to make sure to blow up the square bomb because it's just kind of sitting back there on the ground. And then hopefully this angle will send me right into the cage and we can pull the glider in time before we splat on the ground. Nice, not bad. Nice. And I think that this upcoming uh, launch over here to Toto Saw is my favorite. Um, I kind of figured out that if you do this specific kind of t uh, turn wind bomb here, it gets you just enough speed for lag. Yo, whose strat is that? I think somebody named Apple Freezer. <laughs> it might be Apple yours. Apple strats. I don't know. <laughs> so now we're going to look over here. Game wants to get me again, but we're not going to let it. All right, I was able to get it it's a bit far to left, but if I can carefully slip through the trees, no, I can't. That's fine. We're over in the forest, and that's all that matters. There is a, an angry bear here. Uh, let's name him Benjamin. Not a like fan it. of Link. Or Benjamin Roberto. I think we named him Roberto. Roberto, Roberto okay. no leg link. Okay. I think Roberto scared the uh, living daylights out of me during my casual playthrough. <laughs> he does just kind of appear, doesn't he? He's just like, yeah, uh, suddenly bear. But if, we're, if Jimbo were to get that super at the, the proper angle, uh, you could actually get there so quickly that those giant boulders in front aren't spawned. So right. You just Glide straight through the shrine. Yeah. And uh, occasionally you get a completely potato shrine inside there where it's just a floating elevator over a, a rushing pond into the mountain. It's pretty wild. Alright, so that is the end of this branch. Now we're going to warp back to Kaiowan near that stable that we stopped at to do some cooking. And this is where I feel like the run really gets, like, into crunch time, so to speak. This is about 40, 45 minutes in, um, and this is where things started getting a little bit difficult. Uh, and this is also the beginning of my route. Uh, all of the MSR routes basically go through that pattern and end at Totosa. This is where I start doing things differently. So I'm going to do another turn wind bomb here, hopefully get a super, which we did. And then we're going to hopefully get another super launch up here to Namika Oz, which is our first regular test of strength. And we're going to do another cutscene skip that we did earlier, but a bit different this time. Uh, no super there, but we're g we got some pretty good speed here. Uh, so if oh well, one second. Uh, I'm gonna set up skew here on this boulder. It's actually in a pretty good spot facing north, and uh, that's the trick for all tests of strength. All tests of strength are facing north, so we want Link to be tilting back to the south. So while I do this. Uh, cutscene skip here. We're going to have TT explain what exactly I'm doing. Yeah, so what Jimbo's going to do is he's going to place a square bomb first. If you've noticed most of the wind bombs that Jimbo has been doing, he's been placing the round bomb and then the square bomb. Well, if you invert that, you place the square bomb first, then the round bomb. Um, it gives Link a much slower and a little, a lot less, uh, gives him a lot less height on his wind bombs. So, if he does this correctly, he should be able to do backflip, enter bullet time, detonate the bomb, and then actually be able to be low enough to where he can actually pull the pull paraglider out and just sail across the other side. There we go. Just like that, gamers. And a nice clip, too. The clip into those pillars is very finicky if you don't have the right skew. Um, I've, I've, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm learning this category and I have lost 10 to 15 minutes just on those pillar clips alone. So. Jibo doing it like absolute nothing is uh, 
is really impressive. And I, I have my issues occasionally too. They are super specific. Um, but we got them labbed out. We got a good community working on these things. So now uh, we're heading to Miro Shah's. Uh, typically this, these two shrines are done at the end of the route for the other runners and for the world record. Um, and then they go to the forest from here. But I'm going to do things a bit differently and I'm going to enter the forest in a different way. Uh, and right there you kind of saw the effect of this category with locked time of day. Um, you'll notice around me the world just looks kind of hazy, which makes the polygons a lot less noticeable, which makes it a lot harder to get lag. So right there, we got a missed super launch because there just wasn't any lag to get, but that's no problem. Um, this shrine, we're going to do somewhat casually, play a little uh, mini golf here, I guess. You do some jumps in mini golf. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> I mean, I do. Up. Yeah. So we're gonna make sure to manage our stamina correctly, because we only got that one wheel. Um, we're going to stasis this orb and hit it five times. And then slide it on into this hole in one. Pog me. Pog champ. And then we're gonna use a regular bomb to send this guy into that slab and flip it over. I think the game wants you to use stasis to do that, but you can also use a bomb arrow. Okay. And now, uh, we're kind of, we're sort of going to get back on track with uh, the other route. We're going to go over to Sheirata, um, but I have a specific launch here that Hopefully we'll get me there in one go, but we'll see about that. It's kind of a fussy one. Um, there's a runner of this category and of Breath of the Wild named Zinpars, and we've taken, or at least I've taken to calling this little ledge here, the Zinpars lip, because he's the first one to decide that, hey, why don't we just stand on here to do wind bombs? And we said, yeah, that's a great idea. I didn't know that. That's what it'll be referred to from now on. <laughs> May it ever, forever be shell, so. Um, so we didn't get any lag there, unfortunately. I think I just uh, placed the bombs a little bit incorrectly, but we'll back it up with another turn with bomb here. Do you need to grab ice arrows here? I do. Uh, I'm gonna get them after the shrine. Actually, you know what? Let's get them now, just to be safe. Um, so then it won't mess up what I do next. Gonna open the shrine really quickly. But they're over here on this pillar here. And we're going to fail and be sad. But that's okay. We'll just put a cryo block here. There we go. Make sure to blow up that square guy, because we don't want him to uh, mess up the launch back to the shrine. So sometimes Jimbo is going to have to blow up bombs. Um, that's because when we do the long distance wind bombs, we actually get so far away from them, they despawn. Right. So it resets the timer for us automatically. So yeah, if you're still in the same area, you kind of just got to be sure to take care of them. Um. Now, I know you've seen a lot of wind bombs inside of shrines, and this may shock you, but we're going to do another one. Uh, we're just going to neatly flip over this gate here. Um, but a handy thing about this shrine is that it has this curved wall here that actually is facing north. So we're going to abuse that and just go ahead and take that skew with us to so Kofi the next test of strength. So this is maybe one of my least favorite launches in the run. Um, we need a bit of height, so we're going to stand on this weird ledge 
on the shrine, but we need to like run and jump on top of it in a weird way that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but... Oh god, okay. Getting a little excited there, I guess. And that uh, Lizalfo saw me, so he's probably going to cause some issues. But I got those extra ice arrows, so I can probably just freeze him and uh, tell him to mind his own business. Alright, this ledge does not want to work with me right now. There we go. There we go. You're in timeout. Okay, and now I'm gonna go into VR because it's really hard to get lag for this. And that did work, but the base speed is pretty slow. So, I guess you're seeing why I don't really care for this one. Because it just sometimes doesn't want to work. But the reason Jimbo... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, the reason Jimbo enters into uh, VR mode is because it forces the game to render twice. So it actually just doubles the amount of polygons we have. So it's really good and useful for uh, areas where there's not too much we can look at to, to cause a lag. Alright. So now we're in another test of strength, and hopefully we'll get that same smooth cutscene skip. Okay. Real quick here, we have a $15 donation from Newborn and Salted. This one's for Bobka. Good luck, Jimbo. <laughs> Bobka says thanks. Appreciate it, newborn. Yeah, okay. And we ragdolled. I kind of want to drop this shield just because it's going to break on me next. And I don't want it to mess anything up. But other than that launch being annoying, as usual, we're on through. Uh, next we're going to Tom Mool, and this is one of my favorite strats here. Um, we do a, a normal kind of front hop, but then we do one of those mid-air wind bombs to uh, glide safely over a mountain, so... If I can line it up correctly, this should look pretty smooth. Okay, you go over to this rock outcrop here, and aim a little bit off north so that... The corner of the uh, square bomb hits Link a little bit harder. Get some extra speed. And get lag from those trees there. It looks like Link is facing the right way, which is nice. And I kind of slow down in midair just so those bombs can line up correctly. And I missed, but that's not bad. Usually you gotta kind of slowly run up that hill and it's pretty annoying. Now, we're at Tamul, by far the hardest shrine in Breath of the Wild. Um, yep. You guys are going to want to pay close attention. There are several frame-perfect tricks here. If you blink, you're just going to miss it. So, uh, I want you I to be you, in deep focus here. I hope you practiced a bunch. I did, man. Believe me. Okay. All right, that was the first one. All right, now the really hard part. Okay, we did it. We did it. We, we got it, guys. Did, Perfect. Did, did, good job, gamer. <laughs> Thank job. you. I played a video game. So, obviously I'm joking. That shrine is a joke. You literally just run up the ledge and you're done. Uh, but hey, you gotta hype it up, right? Gotta have fun with it. Okay, next one's Moakit. Um, this is another pretty straightforward one, but uh, we're gonna use another midair here to get here pretty fast. This is a, a pretty quick sequence of shrines here. Like the this set of five. And we got Link facing the right direction, which is really nice. So I wait for the refresh and get hit by the corner of the bomb, and that sends Link basically right to the door. I, I would go and try to explain the cardinal worth 
first orthogonal directions, but uh, you have a much better understanding <laughs> than that than I do. Yeah. Because I only play any percent. So uh, when you're facing... Uh, okay, so here's kind of a funky thing about uh, bombs in this game. Uh, obviously you have the two kinds, circle and square. Um, for whatever reason, if you jump up in the air, that's bad. Oh god. No. I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen, I'm gonna <laughs> die. <laughs> The game heard me talking crap about it. Um, oh, oh. That was fun. So anyway, um, when you jump up in the air or you release a square bomb midair while you're gliding, um, it will always spawn with its uh, sides facing in cardinal directions, east, west, north, and south. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you get the ceiling of the shrine and it uh, causes you to lose complete control of Link, and then he decides to run up banisters. Um, so, because the square bomb is always going to face uh, the same way, no matter what, if you do a front hop wind bomb in a cardinal direction, it's just going to kind of pop Link in the air, uh, not very quickly, but pretty high. Uh, and if you do it in an ordinal direction, northwest, southwest, etc., it's going to send you a lot faster because the corner is hitting Link uh, instead of like the flat edge. Um, so we use the that understanding to plan out what we're going to do. So now we're going to do another turn here. I didn't quite get that one right. That's okay, we got a decent amount of speed. Um, and this uh, upcoming one, I developed a slightly different strat here. Um, it's basically like Tomul Senior. Like we just did Tomul Junior. This is Tomul Senior, uh, where you just run through and blow up some walls. Uh, but I'm gonna do a square first front hop and try to get a really low poppy angle, sort of. That doesn't make any sense, but you'll hit see here in a second. If I just kind of delay the inputs, it'll send me right to the monk. Pretty nice. It saves about 10 to 12 seconds, so pretty cool. Very nice. You can write that down in my notebook real quick. <laughs> it's a good one. Just kind of a funky timing. Um, so next is Zikasho, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I hate the shrine. Uh, the amount of times I've lost good runs or good times to this, uh, sequence of launches is just... I just can't. So, I'm gonna go due east here, and then quickly freeze Link so that I can do a midair. Okay, and then do another front hop. Hopefully clear this mountain. All right, not bad. And inside the shrine, you can do one of those front hop wind bombs to get to the monk, but it's kind of in a weird spot. So we have something called a, a dead angle. Um, if you aim in those spots in between cardinal and ordinal, we don't know why it fails, but it does. And this shrine, the way it's just set up, doing a front hop wind bomb doesn't really work. So what I did was I developed this little backflip setup here to make things a bit easier. And I ate at the right time because uh, Link just smashed his knees into the stairs there. So we're through. Not, uh, not too much uh, of a stress there. Shrine can be a major pain sometimes, though. Yeah, I hate it. All right, next we're going to Dahesho, another test of strength. Um, we need to get around this big mountain here on the right. Um, and I need to line up in a specific way. 
to get the right angle and the right speed for this first super launch. And that looks pretty slow, but it is a super. And it's going to get me to a spot where I'm going to do a little quick turn here. And you'll notice that I kind of walk into these, and the reason for that is it kind of spaces the bombs out in a better way that um, aligns them in a better position relative to Link. And we're gonna set skew on this texture here on the back side of the shrine. And if I ever have a skew that isn't working correctly, and hopefully I don't have to show this off, but there is a way to get skew um, just on the outside of the gate for a good backup. So now we're going to set up our little cutscene skip yet again. Got that pretty cleanly. Just see where our skew looks. That's uh, a little bit scary there. All right, we're good. Sometimes, so what I mean by skew is that little like snap backward that Link did. Um, sometimes that snap back is a little bit too strong and that can mess up the clip, but that one was just on the edge of being bad, but ended up being just fine. Yeah, skew is a very, very interesting thing, and I'm not even sure we fully understand it yet. Yeah. Just the game uh, is basically remembering your position when in shield surfing, but we don't really know why it wants to remember that. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. All right, so now we're going over to Kamail. Um, this is kind of a fussy super launch here. I need pretty specific speed. And I did get the lag, but I messed up the input for the glider pull, so... I'm gonna land here just for safety. So I don't run out of stamina or have to eat my, uh, my stamina food. And then I'm gonna get completely bombarded by Octorox. Like they, they love Link. Uh, there we go. Okay. So now we're gonna do another one of those square first front hops, uh, and I'm gonna try to get a pretty low angle here, but this one's kind of fussy and not necessarily um, required to do correctly. So we got that high angle, and I'm gonna eat just for safety. And I died anyway. Wow. Four hearts. That's, uh, that's pretty rude. Uh, yeah. I've, uh, literally never seen that. Yeah, that's a lot from a fall damage like that. So, we haven't seen it yet, but there is a chance if Link is rolling around in Ragdoll State, he can continuously take damage. Mm -hmm. um, so, Ragdoll Link is kind of uh, iffy on how much damage it's going to take each time. Yeah. So, it kind of looks like my capture card is a bit... Uh lagging here, so I'm gonna try to refresh it for you guys, just so it is less of a slideshow. Alright, hopefully that'll fix it. No splicing, I promise. Alright, next I'm gonna do a different kind of wind bomb here, called a spider wind bomb, where I'm gonna like jump off this wall to set it up. And I was able to get it, which is nice. And then we're going to go over to this, these enemies over here, and I'm going to pull this Boko over. Just to set him up for a BTB. 
freeze him in that position. And then get myself lined up here. And that's pretty good. Alright. Okay, now we're here at uh, Kotosa Og. Uh, this is actually, and I'm I'm not exaggerating, a mini golf shrine. Uh, we're gonna ignore the mini golf though, because who wants to watch me do putt putt with motion controls? But we're gonna do another one of those quick square first jumps. Uh, hopefully, I just like glide right into the monk's lap here. I knew I did not, but that's okay. Okay. It's like there's a couple of people in chat that want to actually watch you play mini golf. Hopefully, um, ideally, you get like kind of a glancing blow off his back, and it just kind of like slightly like pushes you over to the monk. But I got a high one, but that's all right. Mini golf is a slapper, that's true. All right, now we're gonna set up another BTB to Zunakai, and this is going to end this long branch we just did here and kind of put us in the home stretch. And I got some normal arrows ready because I need to manipulate him into position. I'm gonna shoot this wall here, like of a ruins of a house, and then the torch and wait for him to get facing neutral. Okay. I'm gonna pick up these arrows, just, you know, you never know, right? And then I'm gonna aim at a specific spot. And that looks pretty good. Um, so another difference in my route is that I'm gonna pick up a flame blade in this chest here and that combined with my cold protection meal is going to completely protect me in the snow fields that I'm gonna finish the run in. Should make a quick note that uh, moblins are actually probably one of the easier enemies to do bullet time bounces off because their hitboxes are so big but not too big. Yeah, they're a little bit more lenient, um, but you do need to freeze them. There aren't any that you can just jump onto and get a BTB, um, and they take a little bit of understanding of how to manipulate and what will happen when you hit them in specific spots. Uh, but yeah, they're they're pretty uh, useful for sure. We definitely use a lot of uh, moblins for BTBs and other categories. All right, moblins were actually the first thing, uh, first enemies BTBs were discovered on. That's true. Uh, BTBs were actually discovered completely by accident by a uh, casual player. Um, he was just kind of surfing around. I think it was uh, in the area above K No, which is the Gerudo stable. And he like jumped and then like landed on top of a moblin and shot it in the head and it suddenly just like launched him through the air um, And he posted it on Twitter and everyone just freaked out and like immediately started working on how to like make that work and make it consistent um, And those were discovered about two years ago uh, So they're pretty well figured out and understood um, and very practical for uh, speedruns all right, so now that we're back at the Great Plateau, I'm gonna set up a very specific backflip uh, super launch here. Because it's pretty easy to lag out, but we got the right speed. And there is a wind bomb I can do here inside of rota U, but I'm gonna go ahead and show off the old casual, well not casual, I'm gonna show off the old speedrun strat just to give a little variety here. You know what, thinking about it, Jimbo, mm -hmm. uh, this is three Septembers in a row where there's been a big discovery. I know, right? Because we, we had BTBs discovered two years ago, mm -hmm. wind bombs were discovered last year, and then this year, 
Um, Swiffy22 just pointed out uh, there's something we now have called Stasis Bounce, which gives us the speed of VTBs without having to have a enemy nearby. Yeah. It's pretty weird. It kind of opens things up for amiibo, because there are amiibos that can spawn metal blocks. So there you saw me, saw me uh, kind of like run on top of the wall and then uh, abuse the shrine mechanics there. So we're here moving into the end game. We're at shrine 29 coming up out of 40. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get another turn super. And this one's pretty fussy. Like the, uh, this is not an easy super launch. So I'm gonna hopefully look in the right direction and also not mess up the inputs too badly. Okay, that's good speed. Now I go into VR to render the game twice. All right, looks like we got it. So that's a lot of work just to get a little bit of extra speed, but it's uh, better than the alternative, I promise. And then inside of Kamiotok, uh, we have another turn set up here that's basically gonna shoot me right at the monk if I can get the uh, timing correctly. Um, and what's kind of sad is that there's a diamond in here that's pretty useful for other categories to sell for money, but we don't buy anything in this little category here, so we're just gonna ignore it. Alright, we're a little bit low into the right. That's okay. Just do this. Hello. Alright. And then we're moving on to Sheem to Goes. And I need to do a BTB setup here. There, you can get there with wind bombs, but it's faster to just bounce off a of moblin's back. Yeah, while wind bombs are amazing, they're nowhere near the speed that uh, BTBs can provide with us. So yeah, we tend to use those where we can. Oops. Try to get over here on the, the Zinpar's lip. Is every one of those things called Zinpar lip? Yes, sir. Every okay. uh, every shrine looks exa is shaped exactly the same, so every lip is a Zinpar's lip. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, so I'm whistle sprinting to get that Moblin's attention, and once he turns neutral, I'll freeze him. Uh, there is a way to set him up with just, like, shooting an arrow, but this just makes it a lot easier and more practical. And I want to kind of go off his shoulder. And that'll send me relatively right at the spawn point for this shrine. Um, I need to do... kind of solve a riddle, so to speak. Like, uh, Cass is over here, playing his accordion, and he tells you to shoot an arrow through two of these hoops at, in one shot, but, oops, we don't need to speak to cast just yet, or ever, to be honest. All right, uh, so we wait for the shrine to load in. Um, we're going to do kind of a funky damage boost in this shrine. Like, you could just wind bomb over to this monk, but you're likely to take a bunch of fall damage. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is do a shield jump and then bounce off of it and then blow myself up to get over to the monk. Uh, but what kind of a funky thing about this strat is that the shield that I have on my back, the shield of the mind's eye, is very slippery. Like, a. Uh, It'll make Link slide a lot farther and faster on grass and snow and sand. So I needed to kind of back up there a little bit uh, so that I don't uh, hit the wall first before I bounce over. I think that's one thing a lot of uh, casual players don't know is that um, there are different shield textures uh, mm -hmm. that will dictate your speed when you shield surf. Right. The uh, the Radiant Shield is one of the best shields in the game for that, both for durability and for uh, its slipperiness. Um, 
Yeah, definitely a good thing to know. And another thing that a lot of people don't know is that different bows have different ranges and also fire at different speeds, uh, just like normally. So the falcon bow and swallow bow and great eagle bow are extremely useful for us. Um, and I messed up the super there, so I'm gonna go ahead and land here and then do another one. Just sort of unfortunate, but that's okay. Get plenty of speed from those guys. And then we're gonna do kind of a funky trick here that honestly does not make a whole lot of sense. Um, but this shrine... Do I even remember what they want you to do? Um, basically they want you to get this, like, room moving back and forward so that you can, like, pop yourself in on this, like, sort of launcher here. But if you target and hold forward as you hit it, you can just get a pop-up higher and farther and just run to the monk. Alright. Uh, so next are a couple of tests of strength. These ones can be a bit of a heck. But I am feeling pretty good about how those cutscene skips are going right now. So pretty much all we got to worry about is our skew angles, because these are a little bit funky. Uh, I'm going to stand on this weird like ledge here, just so I can get into bullet time. Ride this up, and then do another turn once I get to the ledge here. That looks decently fast. And what's kind of funky about this one is that there's a good spot for skew, but it's not exactly facing north. So when you do clip, you need to uh, kind of face the wall at a weird angle. Right. And get our square guy out. And just hop and put it on the ledge. And like I said, it'll always spawn in those cardinal directions, so it's always going to be facing in the right way for me there. Okay. And look a little bit to the left. And maybe a little bit more, because that one didn't quite work. There we go. Very nice. And Link gets stuck on a stair, because it's Link. But you know how it is in real life. You uh, run next to a wall, uh, a short, like, little step, and you just can't go anywhere. It's pretty realistic. You're still sprinting at full speed. What'd you say? You're still sprinting at full speed. Yeah. Happens all the time. Did it before. Almost dropped my lunch. All right. So now we're gonna head over to Noya Niha, and it's the same sort of deal, minor test of strength, but we're gonna skip that guardian. So I wanna line up against this wall and aim on the side of the sort of top of the shrine there. And yes, these are all very specific setups that uh, we've all worked on together as a community and some that I've uh, worked on myself. Um, and for skew, um, what you're gonna kind of notice is like, I've been getting skew in different spots everywhere, and you might think like, well, why don't you just, you know, get it in the same spot every time, Jimbo? They're all, all the shrines are shaped the same. Well, they're not all facing the same way. And we need the uh, link to be facing north when we do these things. So that is why I don't skew. That's why I don't get skew on this shrine, it's because it's just faced in a weird way. So, now that we're inside, we're gonna go ahead and uh, skip the cutscene yet again, and this is our last test of strength. 
which is a, a huge relief because these are a bit scary. They've been going well, which I'm sure I just jinxed myself. But... Got that one cleanly. Okay. Alright, we didn't jinx ourselves. We're good. Good job. Okay. So now, um, I got a strat that I kind of developed. Um, in all shrines, a category that I had the world record in for a little bit. Uh, I would use a fire arrow to set these thorns on fire and use the updraft to get to the top of this mountain for the next uh, couple wind bombs. But I found out if you just blow up this barrel, um, it'll catch the thorns on fire for me. Won't have to do anything for it. And then I can just ride the gale up. Um, but it's a bit tricky and it can go sideways, so I'm going to be pretty careful here. Okay, that's the first part. I need to get off my shield because otherwise I'll land on the ground in a weird way. But we're out of there and that's really all that matters. Okay. And there we didn't get the super because uh, time of day kind of messed up the polygons there. But we can get this midair no problem. Of the internet coming in with the dad jokes in chat. I can barely, barely believe we didn't think of that before. <laughs> Best dad jokes in the USA, I tell you what. Mm -hmm. Alright, pop over here, and this is uh, one of the reasons why getting five hearts is so nice, is because I won't have to heal at all if these go well. And I can just pop over this mountain, and we're over here at Monotoma. Alright, so here is a, a pretty cool strat. Um, what the game wants you to do is to line up these like launch pads and like send an orb into this gate here. But we're gonna do a jump strike with the two-handed weapon here and just pop it over. Slide right in. Pretty nice I've, little uh, exploit there. I have decided to call this uh, the split space jam. Say that again. I, I've decided to name. So Jimbo knows I tend to name my splits pretty silly things. This one has been affectionately named Space Jam. Space Jam. To do a little basketball shot there. I love it. It's a great documentary that film Space Jam. Yep. Great A. Alright, so now we're heading over to Magna Ra. I'm a bit off target, but I can curve it back over. And it's behind a rock wall, and I'm gonna hopefully line Link up here in the right way to just break this wall down. Typically, you might glide over and drop a bomb, but I think this is a lot faster and cooler. Cares about we speed. We want to look cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to be heading to the snowfield where uh, everything gets a lot harder. So get your Monka S's and uh, pause champs ready because things are about to get serious. Hopefully not your Sag, though. Yeah, hopefully not. All right, now we're going to go over to this uh, these ruins over here to line up a moblin for a BTV. And I'm going to do a midair, because it's me. Um, 
This isn't necessary, but it's just what I do. There's our boy right there. Uh, we have to land on this wall very qu quickly and quietly, otherwise he'll see me. And I shoot an arrow to get his attention. And then sort of line up here, and then I want to go off the, like, inside of his shoulder. And that's a bit far to the right, but that's okay. It's, uh, getting us over this cliff toward the snowfield stable. And you saw me equip the flame blade here, so that'll protect me from a little bit of cold damage for a second. And this is... gosh, I always uh, forget the name of this one. Renoya. Every time. So here's one where fall damage may decide to kill me, but, you know, good vibes go a long way. We're good. Sometimes Link just flops and flops and doesn't want to pull the glider, but that time is friendly. Alright, so next we're going to do a chain of turn wind bombs to get to Sha Gemma. It's on the other side of the snowfield on like the same elevation, so it's not possible really to get there in one wind bomb without setting it up in a really slow way. So because we want to go fast, we're just gonna do it right here from this ledge. Use the stable to get some lag. We got that super launch. We're gonna glide past the, these skulls and these uh, Boko archers down here. Um, they typically don't give you any trouble, but it'd be nice if they didn't try and kill me. I would appreciate it. Please no stab. Much appreciated. Yeah. There's a Lionel. He's just chilling. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and eat my cold food. Um, I can survive. Uh, this damage, it's not a big deal. But it's gonna help, uh, think, make things a lot simpler as we finish out this, uh, part of the run. Fight the Lionel. Okay, just for you. I will fight it, but I am scared. Alright, so for the shrine, we just, uh, lift this boy up, freeze it, get our key. Very complicated puzzle there, Shaw Gemma. Took us hours to figure it out. And next we're going to Kazutoki, which is in one of the three labyrinths. Um, Typically, you know, you'd go through the labyrinth and follow the path and all that, but, you know, we're speedrunners, so we're just going to fly over it and drop right into the uh, monk area. So I want to do a quick front hop here. And then you could set up some other shenanigans here, but it's a little bit safer to go for a backflip here. And I'm going to kind of, like, instantly drop the circle to save stamina. And then get ready for a midair. So, Averna and I just pointed out, um, this is actually where Russian comes into play. Um, we actually get to skip a text box that we get in other languages here uh, for being in Russian. Very good point. And you get that also in English, but uh, Russian just makes things a little bit quicker. We drop here and avoid those electric boys. We don't need their issues right now. So we get here this one text box from the uh, text box from the monk in German or French, which would make certain parts of the run faster. You'd get two, which would be an extra eight, eight seconds. So I'm gonna not deal with that right now. Okay. We're here in the maze, and coming up are the two hardest parts of the run. 
and they are strats that I made up, and anyone who wants to run this and do this route, you can blame me for the headaches later. But I'm hoping that they will go nice and smooth for me here in a second. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I need to get up to the top of the labyrinth uh, to get out of here. Um, so I'm going to do one of those spider wind bombs where I'm going to kind of position Link on the corner of a wall and then pop him up through one of the passageways so that I can get up to the top. So I need to line up very carefully. And then make sure to blow up the square bomb, which it detonated itself, which is fine. And then I'm going to aim at a specific spot and set up a quick backflip here. So this will save stamina because I did it so quickly. And then go into VR to get lag. And we got the super launch. And that'll carry us nice. all across this uh, chasm here to get us to the dark forest where a Kato Wawai uh, waits for us. It looks like we're slowing down a little bit, but uh, we'll get a stamina refresh as I enter the darkness and uh, a cutscene triggers. So that's where that quick backflip setup really comes in handy. True, there is a, a diamond up there on the middle of the labyrinth. I'm going to do another midair here just to get here quicker. And in the darkness is a Hinox who's protecting an orb. Or maybe he doesn't even know why he has it, but he does. But he's asleep and we're just going to stand on his chest and take it from him. And then for a little swag points, we're going to go for a Kobe. Kobe! Um, and you saw me position myself next to a wall. Um, I'm going to do another spider wind bomb here really quickly just to save the trouble of running back across by the Hinox. Um, there's no issue of him like ever showing or like waking up or attacking unless you like hit him. Uh, but just for swag sake. We're going to go ahead and do this. Okay. And we're in here for another Blessing Shrine. That's not too bad. Alright, now, and I'm not joking, this is the scariest part of the run. Um, it is a much quicker forest entry than uh, the other routes, but it's pretty scary. Uh, so while I'm doing it, I'll try and kind of talk through the strats here. Um, so if you know anything about this game, uh, Korok Forest is protected by a bunch of void out zones. But if you're moving fast enough, you can just like glide through them before the game catches up to you. But that requires a lot of speed, and this is not an easy launch to get speed from. Uh, okay. Lag stop deciding Link was going just a little bit too quick there. Weird champ, by the way. But that's okay. Just set it up again. There we go. And it is actually possible to go fast enough to just completely escape that cutscene, which is always really cool, but not that time. And I'm going to set up on one of these specific trees for a backflip setup and aim at a specific spot here. And then I'm going to do another VR super launch. Oh, he lagged out. That is too bad. We were, uh... That was uh, something that I mentioned early on in the run. Um, 
it's possible to be going too fast and the game freaks out. So in that circumstance, the launch failed because we're just going too fast. Kind of ironic. Uh, but we'll just set it up again. It's not that big a deal. Can it both be either too much speed or too much lag? Um, It can be either one or both. More than likely both. Yeah. So that time we did get the super launch. And we did get through the void zone, so nice. not bad. Not ideal, but we got through. And here we are at the final shrine, Kaorug, right next to the Master Sword. Oh, how convenient. It's like we planned it or something. And that is uh, a setup that I came up with, and a, a route that I came up with, so that's something I'm pretty proud of. So we do a, a weak square first uh, wind bomb there, get us right to the monk, and that's 40. So now all we gotta do is pick up that magic sword. Oh, you gotta get the heart containers first. That's true. Uh, so if we have any donations to read, coming up is uh, literally three minutes of mashing A. Uh, but we can talk through some other things while we're doing that. So we just, uh, hop on over this limb here. And this next one too. And then we're gonna find a goddess statue here inside the Deku tree. We're gonna mash A until we have 13 hearts. So, uh, while we're here waiting, uh, we'll give a little background about Breath of the Wild. Uh, it's a growing speedrun game for sure. Um, the game came out three and a half years ago, but we're pretty often finding new speedrun strats. Uh, we're constantly developing new ideas and new ways of finishing the game quickly. Um, there's lots of cool categories out there, like Any% percent, which has some really cool boss rush stuff and really quick movement. Uh, all Dungeons and Master Sword and Dungeons are pretty cool categories that show off parts of the game. Hundo is, you know, it used to be a 30 hour, 25 hour, 24 hour thing, and now it's under 19. So that's a quickly growing category. Um, and then you have category extensions like this, Master Sword Restricted, where you know, you can get the Master Sword quickly and show off some cool strats, or even like Dog Percent, which was shown off recently by Limcube, uh, a pretty important figure in the community at GDQ uh, about three weeks ago. So definitely come by and join the speedrun server if you enjoyed this run, if you want to learn any of these strats. Follow guys like Tallis Thomas, um, he's a good speedrunner and a great dude to watch, fun dude to hang out with. Uh, you got anything to add, Thomas? Um, no, just come hang out in the Breath of the Wild Discord if you're interested in learning. Um, we have plenty of resources, and everyone's super friendly, and we'll always help you out. Um, and like Jimbo said, it's it's a rapidly evolving uh, speedrun. It's still, still fairly young in terms, uh, comparatively to other Zelda games, so we're still finding brand new things that are breaking it constantly. Um, and yeah, there, there's, there's categories for everyone. Um, you can have anything from any percent, which lasts roughly half an hour, to, like Jimbo said, 100%, which is in just under 19-hour run. Which, by the way, 100% uh, was at 20, just broke the 24-hour barrier back in January. So yeah. this year alone, we have shaved almost just we shaved just over five hours out of the game. Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> So now that we uh, are about to pull the Master Sword, as it comes out of the ground, that's time. And right now. Boom. GG's, dude. Yeah, that's the end of the run. Um, and we actually have an incentive to do. So, really quickly, uh, we're going to change gears here, and we're going to get a different file going so that we can go ahead and fight the bossies. So, quick background about the boss rush. Um, there are four divine beasts 
spread throughout Hyrule. Um, these are the dungeons of the game, and there are a boss in each of one of them. Each one of them. Um, since this is an open world game and it's non-linear, you can actually go straight to Hyrule Castle, which is what we do in any percent. Uh, when you do this, though, you have to fight all four of the Blights plus Calamity Ganon in one shot. If you die at any point during this, you will get sent back to the very first one. Mm -hmm. so it's pretty intensive. Um, it's routed out extremely well, so it's pretty much uh, muscle memory for anybody who's run any percent before. Um, and it's just impressive as hell to watch. Yeah. So I, I set up this file with all the weapons and the attack up potion that I need. So while I do this weird voodoo dance, I'll let Tom explain a spawn snipe. Yep. So spawn sniping, or this one is affectionately known as blight skip. Um, Jimbo's going to do a series of jumps and shoot an arrow in a very specific location with a very specific bow. And what this does is it was discovered that um, cutscenes, including the blight, uh, involving the blights, aren't pre-rendered. They are using live actors. Um, and what that means is we can shoot an arrow, and this one actually gets in the position to consistently headshot uh, wind blight here, which is why you see it shaking kind of when uh, when it's going through. So there's an arrow up there. It's consistently getting headshot, and uh, hopefully it brings it just down to kill it. Uh, so we can actually just skip this boss entirely using one arrow. And the reason why I put this on as an incentive is I feel like it's really poetic after getting the Master Sword to go fight the last boss. So we're just going to kind of beat the game, so to speak, because that's not really a requirement in Master Sword Restricted. And that's why it's on the category extensions. Uh, but I thought it would be a cool way to kind of showcase uh, a different side of this game. Um, so right there, um, I was able to abuse a mechanic called double hits uh, to like kind of hit uh, Water Blight as he's uh, standing there. Yeah, so if you face Link away from an object you're trying to hit while you do a spin attack, um, you can sometimes, and usually mostly if you do it correctly, uh, you can actually get Link to hit it twice in one swing. So it's a very good way um, to get a large amount of damage in quickly. Alright, that's Water Blight down. Next we're going to do a strat to knock Fire Blight down before he can get any attacks in. So, Fire Blight in any percent is very scary. Um, Jimbo has a lot of health here. Usually in any percent we only have three, health, three hearts. Um, so Jimbo mentioned before there's something called one shot protection, where if you're at full health and you take something, take damage that would otherwise be fatal, it would actually knock you down to a quarter of a heart. Well, most of Fire Blight's attacks ignore that rule entirely. So if you don't get that stun in at the right time, uh, he will just kill you. Yeah. So he's gonna do this invincibility thing, but we're gonna let him suck up a bomb, knock him to the ground, and then uh, try and one cycle him here. And he was kind of rude, so it happens. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this and then switch back to that claymore as it's going through the air. Because I need it to uh, start this first phase of Thunderblight. He's the first. He's the only boss that has a shield, so we're gonna take that away from him immediately, and then knock him to the ground. Oh, it's gonna get up. Pretty rude. Okay, we got him. So Thunderblade's probably the scariest of the blades when you're wearing a Blight Rush, um, just because you move so quickly. But once you kind of get comfortable with how the fight's supposed to go, it's really just super easy, It's you know, once you get used to it. Yeah, he's pretty automatic. So I can break his shield by throwing a boomerang there, because it causes multiple hits at once, and then break his shield with the fourth hit. Alright, now we're moving on to the Doom Spider. Very nice. And we have the Master Sword, so uh, I've been avoiding using it because it cuts through these guys like butter, so I just wanted to show off some strats first. 
get a quick headshot in there just for funsies. This is a guy that you uh, fight specifically by doing uh, headshots because they just do so much damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the attack of potion and the bomb arrows and the bow that we get uh, from the castle, um, headshots to deal quite a very like a very very large amount of damage. So um, instead of flurry rushing or anything like that, we try to uh, we just stay calm and uh, get as many headshots as we possible. to play. And he'll probably go to the wall after this. It's just sort of his attack pattern. See, there he goes. But we can knock him back off with these two bomb arrows that I saved. And I'm gonna throw this claymore at him because I hate him. <laughs> and now I need to get a shield parry here to uh, get him into a stun lock. Okay, and I get out this and hit him three times, and then get the stone smasher, and I'm gonna slam him at a specific time, just so he can't get up. And this does not work in master mode, right? so don't try it. Um, but one thing I do want to point out is, uh, if you you saw when Jimbo did the laser parry, it was actually very fast. Um, what he did was he actually, as soon as he parried the laser, he gets crouched, and that actually cancels his slow motion. Right. Um, very small amount of time save, and it's kind of risky, because if you don't time it right, you could die. Uh, but it looks cool. Here it does. I love it. It just feels so good. Like, all the times that Calamity has killed any percent runs, uh, getting him with that quick laser and then pop him in the face it just feels really good. So yeah, then Calamity going. is, uh, pretty mean. So now we're, uh, going into basically an auto-scroller. This is Dark Beast Ganon. Um, he's gonna reveal some spots to hit with the light bow here. So I'm gonna camp out in here, take some, uh strategic shots here. This is RNG manipulation, I promise. And I'm gonna leave so that he does a little bit of a turnabout. And then we move back behind him to do some more RNG manipulation. Highly, yeah. highly important that you do this. Very important. So the good thing about the Dark Beast fight is if you somehow die, which is possible, we've all done it. True. Uh, you don't, you don't have to go through the, the light rush again. You actually can you just actually restart the deck at the beginning of the uh, the big big fight, as I would call it. demon up here. This is not perverted at all. Just doing our thing, you know, speedrunning. <coughs> manipulating manipulating the problem behavior for next run. Exactly. Final shot here is on his underbelly. Alright. Then we'll move into the final shot here on his eyeball. I think it actually is Russian because it's a different file. Alright, that's it. So yep, that was Breath of the Wild. Um, like we said, come by the speedrun Discord if you want to learn some cool tricks. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're some cool dudes and we love hanging out with folks. So please uh, 
donate to uh, St. Jude's Children's, Hosp Children's Hospital if you can. Um, this marathon is going to be going on all weekend, and make sure to support those other runners. Um, and good luck to Lake with Ocarina of Time next. So thanks very much, guys. I've been Jimbo Moses, and uh, I'll see you around. And uh, my commentator, of course, is Tallis Thomas. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you guys for the run. That was that was quite something. We're gonna go ahead and take it back to intermission. Uh, where we come.